Hi, I'm Kev from SonsOfK.com. Welcome to another video. We're going to start looking at um, a little series where we show you guys how to teach people with disabilities. We're going to go right from the beginning. We're going to pick two of my disabilities to start with. And then throughout the course of this year, we'll start looking how to adapt your system and the way you teach for people that have certain disabilities. As usual, the man with the hat, the Chris. Kev, the hatless wonder. There are so many disabilities, if we were to cover them all, we would get nowhere very quickly, to be honest. So this is an idea, like everything we do, this is an idea, hopefully you can adapt it and see it for what it is. This is something you can use, change to suit your needs. As always, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe because we like it when you do. And uh, let's crack on. Crack on, mate. Right, so we're on to my disability. And the first people see is the wheelchair on my canes. But I'm actually dyslexic. Um, we put a little few little cards up. But dyslexia is basically word jumbling, um, also having problems turning left and right. The way I got through this uh, was there's some exercises you can do to actually bring your words back to you. We'll go through that on a later date. With the left and right, I always keep the football with my left leg, so I know that the opposite must be right. So if they say, put your right hand up, I'll go, ah, I kick with that leg, up goes this hand. One thing I get at home a lot is the third point, a short-term memory, problems with it. Um, my family always say, oh, but you said this and you said that, and I've got no recognition of what the hell's going on. And half the time, I can't even remember my name. Is it? It's not worth remembering, so it's no big loss. <laughs> okay. Another thing we have great problems with, um, I found out when I was in a band with a friend called Alan, and we tried to do a Neil Sadakshir song. Neil Sadaka. We used to call him Sadakshir. It's not that Sadakshir. We called him the Neil Sadakshir. And it was the calendar song, which goes... You have very bad taste in music. <laughs> <laughs> it says the, the list, list of the months out, one after the other. Like and January. Yeah, and my, my thing was just to call the name of the month out. And I couldn't. I just could not get it in the right order, I couldn't remember it, um, so we stopped doing the song. Basically down to me. Not the fact it wasn't a very good song. Another great thing, um, and my wife will attest to this, is that our management and self-organisational skills are pretty low. How long have you been organising your room? Six, Six months. How many days should it really take? About two. We just put things off. Um, we know we've got to do something, and there's always tomorrow. And I always sit on my tombstone, I'll do it tomorrow. And you're quite off putting. Thank you. Then we come to two really great points, and I can't tell you how many times at school I got told off for my handwriting and spelling. Absolutely atrocious. Um, there's also, I get told off quite a lot. That I'm saying something and halfway through I kind of <laughs> put it again. Um, you can't complete a coherent sentence. Sometimes, depending how bad the dyslexia is at the time. When you're driving, you're very good at performing complete sentences at other drivers. There's differences, there's aggression going on a bit. So when Chris and I work together, um, especially when he's teaching me karate, he has to go over points again and again and again because of the short-term memory. He has to be aware that if he's facing me and he says left arm is coming across, right arm is coming up, there may be a stop. You know, I may sort of just freeze for a little while, get the left, go that way. So when you're teaching someone with dyslexia, it's best to go at their speed. Understand that you have to reinforce a few things and understand that you may have to take extra time just listening to them because they may not be able to express themselves as eloquently as I can. Mm. 
You're very eloquent. Got love the Chris. Mm. Right, now we're going to go into the wheelchair. And let's have a look at fun, shall we? When Chris and I work together, I've got a really good understanding of my body and how it works. And I've been in the wheelchair for quite a few years now, haven't I? Yep. Yeah, so I've got used to it. But Dan hasn't, so Dan, do you want to get a chair? Yeah, sure. Okay, take your boat off. Push forward. There we are. What we're going to do is we're going to do the first part of reflection one. You okay? Yeah. You, you want the seatbelt on? That's it. Just double check. <laughs> sure. No, safety. Okay, if you've seen the reflection one that I've done in the wheelchair, um, it was a cooperation between Chris and myself, going through the moves, understanding the principle behind the technique, and going from there. Chris is just going to gently show you just the first two roads. First two roads? roads. Yeah, first two roads of reflection one. Right, Dan, do you want to take yourself backwards, mate? Yep. Having fun? Yeah. Well. <laughs> One of the big things, everyone in the wheelchair doesn't really want to be in a wheelchair. Everyone that's not in a wheelchair, as soon as one's empty, they'll jump in it and have some fun. So Chris is just going to show us the first reflection. Yeah. First couple of rows. Um, we haven't mentioned Grandmaster Crandall for a while. We haven't. But if you check out his Kung Fu Movement Beyond Disabilities DVD on the Virtual Dojo, it will give you a good insight as well, because um, well, he's a very nice man. Very nice. Okay. So, as you recall, we start in the yoy position, we're stepping to the left, which straight away Kev's going... <laughs> so these are things we think about, we say, but we don't think about. If we're training Mark, who is blind, it's something else that we, again, we have to think about. So I'll be moving in this direction, sliding my foot out, so same size, nice two-handed low block, bringing it round by fan block strike, grabbing the cane, moving forward to a nice strike, reversing my position, do the low block, fan strike, and the upper strike. Right, Dan, did you get that? I worked out the turn then. Right, come through, mate. Right, he's worked come, out the turn. Come into it. And what we want you to do, yeah. Is exactly what Chris has just done. Right. Okay? Yep. In your own time, mate. <laughs> just just keep going, don't worry. No, yeah. Now normally in karate, you'll have your sensei in front, yeah. you'll do the moves. You're standing either to the side or just behind. You're watching and you're following. In a chair, it is totally different. Yeah. It is totally different. So come back to the beginning. Okay. Now, Chris and myself, um, we spent just over 18 months yeah. up at the University of Derby. And we did a, a coaching inclusion course. So it was just basically teaching people with disabilities. We had a bit of a... A leg up, so to speak, pardon the pun. Leg down. Because Chris was showing his teaching through me, and I was showing it through Bill, um, and also uh, Linda that had ep epilepsy. So we kind of had a little bit of a cheat start. So this is how Chris would actually teach someone in a chair for the first time how to do this reflection. Okay, so why are you going to be here mm -hmm. or? Here, yeah. where would you think you would hold the cane for accessibility? <coughs> Probably here. Yeah, because oh, it's ready to go. Now, first move with me turning out, mm -hmm. so I'll be facing Kev and bringing this cane over and doing a two handed low block. Right. Now, if you let go of the cane with one hand, mm -hmm. so you're not holding it at all, you've suddenly lost control. So, would that be a better you? Probably, but you let go of the cane. Yeah, I mean. Okay. okay. It's a harsh lesson, but yeah, it's very no, simple. Okay. So when you're turning, yeah, 
use one hand on the wheel. So you want to face cab, so you pick the right direction. Okay. Yeah. Right, go back to start, mate. Now try doing it with the now, other hand. You've just done what with your right hand? You turned the wheel from... You pulled the wheel... Did that feel easier than pushing? Well, I felt, well, I did the complete wrong way. I did that. I should probably should have used the left hand. Right. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So, moving round. Feel better? Yeah. yeah. So much easier. Okay. So, from that position, so you can then bring this down. Yeah. So, it'd be in front of you. You could use two hands. Yeah. Or if you wanted to keep control of the chair with one hand. Mm -hmm. So think of this as striking there, Lee. So yeah. you could do a big motion from the wrist. Now normally we would move, I would move forward. Yeah. And then do my finishing strike. Would you move forward? What's going to happen if you try and move well, forward? Well, if I move forward, it's going to project me forward or yeah. roll back even. But if you try moving the chair forward, yeah. you suddenly... Yeah. But would you have time to do that in reality? Probably. Okay, what you've got to do is find what works for you. But uh, before you move, the next move, yeah. turn around. So, nice one, Eddie. Now you've got control. Yeah. yeah. Now comes the yeah. control. So, yeah. there, this is where you need to learn control. Yeah. And then you're repeating the move yeah. on the other side. So, it'd be the down, down block, strike, strike, and then the double. Yeah. Okay, bring your chair back, mate. Yeah. Bring it back to the middle. Right, well, then I'm going to jump into the chair. I <laughs> can't <laughs> Yeah, but you're not used to it. This no. is Dan's first time in the chair, uh, learning not something, it. not stealing it and running around the pool. The bear in mind, Chris and I, well, I'm more, more myself than Chris, I've learned from videos. So I'm just going to give Chris one cane. I'm going to come into the centre. So for my yoy, mm -hmm. I've got one hand here. <clears throat> okay. When I'm doing the left turn, this cane is down. I'm looking, I'm pushing with that cane, turning with the other hand, right. then coming across. Yeah. Yeah. Hand comes up to the guard, the strike, and then the push away. The cane is dropped, I'm going to be turning left, I'm pushing and yeah. pulling at the same time. Okay, yeah. Then I'm using the cane to stop, over the top, strike, and through. And believe it or not, I spend hours just going... learning how to turn in a chair. Yeah. Now, people that are used to chairs have got quite the idea of you know, what they can do when they do the wheelies and they do everything nicer. Yeah? But once you start putting something in their hands, mm -hmm. this is when they start, okay, what am I going to do? And I take a guess that you're right handed. Mm -hmm. Hence, the first thing you did was the right hand. Yeah, that's what Dom really Yeah. Look at their ability, look at their level of comprehension their level of ease. And then, as Chris was doing with Dan, he was going through and explaining step by step. And quite often going twice, three times through it. Doesn't matter how many times. Doesn't matter how many times you mess it up. It's not an issue. It's not a race. You're not against anyone other than yourself. Now we hope this is helping. Any other tips, Chris? Each person is an individual, whether able-bodied or not. So there's things I do which other people don't do, they suit me. So on our videos, you might find something which works for you and something that won't. There is, I was showing a technique the other day, it won't work for me, it'll work for Dan because he's got really long legs and it's a lovely takedown. Each person we teach with a disability, we treat not as part of a team, in the sense of it's going to be the same. They're part of the team in the sense that they are with us and they learn the principle behind the technique and it's adapted 
to suit that single person. So we are a team, but we are individuals in our own team, and I think that's the key thing. Dyslexia, one of the side effects of dyslexia that Kev didn't mention is it actually ruins your self-confidence as well. Yeah. It's really bizarre. Um, so you got a disability you're aware of? Just my eyesight. Yeah, people think, I have got disability. Actually, you're vision impaired, you're wearing glasses. Well, I've got four, and you know two of them already. Can you guess the other two? I wear glasses, and I'm partially deaf. Yeah. Would you know what's wrong with me just by looking at me? This is the thing, you don't know. You can't judge somebody. Different mobility, different ranges, it's all there. So look at what you can do, look at what other people can do. Suit the technique, the principle for the technique for that individual. They will find their own way and that is the key to becoming good at this. It's not making sure everybody's 100% the same as everybody else. It's getting that person to find themselves in the technique that works for them. As there was a big thing we took from the course. Yeah. Was although we was teaching each other, it was actually more the fact that we was learning from the student or the learner, and they were telling us what they can and cannot do, and then we was coming up with adaptions for it. How does that work? They would then look at the adaption and then tweak it. Yeah. To their individual needs. Uh, o Sensei Gichin Funakoshi, father of modern karate. Yeah. One of his sayings was, learn karate, make it your own. This is the same. Learn this, adapt it, make it your own. I've, learned, I've got favourite techniques, which don't look nothing like the original, but the principle's there, and that's what we want. Thanks for watching, guys. We hope you liked the video. As I said, this is only my disability at the moment. Um, we've got a few correspondents that have told me about their disabilities, and as we go through this series throughout this year, we'll start putting some of them in as well. But thanks for watching and thanks for your comments. As always, don't forget to share and care. Don't forget to let us know what you think because it helps us grow. Don't forget to ring the notification bell. I insist it's up there, it is staying there. Okay. Hit the subscribe button. Is it down there? Today it is down there. Today it's down there. And... And where's the fear? The fear has been freed. It is now free range fear.